Okay, now for question number six, part E. The random variable H represents the number of heads obtained when the coin is spun in the experiment. So remember, this experiment is that a coin is um, tossed or spun, as they say, um, a number of times. Okay, and when a head appears, the experiment is stopped. As soon as a head appears, the experiment is stopped. Okay, it's spun up to four times. If a head doesn't appear in the first four throws, the experiment stops after four throws. Okay, so explain why H can only take values 0 and 1. So the fact that the coin, um, uh, sorry, the experiment stops when the first head appears means H can equal 1. Okay, because when the uh, when a head appears okay the, the experiment stops when when a head appears appears the experiment is stopped the experiment ends okay and h equals and and also okay so therefore therefore h cannot be more than one Therefore, H, all right, can never be, cannot be more than one, okay? Because, um, you know, experiments end, because the experiment ends once H equals one, okay? And H is equal to zero when no, what, what, no heads appear, when no heads appear. When no heads appear in the first four throws, okay, okay, after which, after which experiment ends, okay, so basically experiment ends. So H can be zero when no heads appears. It can be one when one head appears in any of the first four throws and whenever it appears the experiment stops so H cannot be more than one. Okay, that kind of explains it, I hope. Um, then it says, um, find the probability distribution of H. So, so H can either be two things, can either be zero or one. So let's put it as in the right format. They have little h and the probability that h is equal to little h. Okay, so it can either be zero or it can be one. Okay, so let's have a look at this and see when it's gonna be zero, when it's gonna be one. So probability that h is equal to zero and what's the probability that h is equal to one. Now, the probability that h is equal to zero is going to be when you get no heads. Okay, so the probability that h is equal to zero is going to be when you get a tail, and then a tail, and then a tail, and then a tail. That's no heads. So remember, getting a head is 0 0.4, getting a tail is 0 0.6, so that's 0 0.6 to the power of 4. That's the probability of getting four tails. Okay, so 0 0.6 to the power of 4, that gives us 0 0.1296. 0 0.1296. Okay, then you have 0 0.1296. Okay, now, of course, the probability that h equals 1, it's very simple to get that in this particular case. You just do 1 minus the probability that h is 0, because there's only two options. They have to add up to 1. So if you do 1 minus this answer, that will give you your answer. Okay, and that's in an exam, that's exactly what I'll do. I would just do 1 minus 0 0.1296. So 1 minus... 0 0.1296 which gives us the value that we're looking for which was where was it 0 0.8704 0 0.8704 okay so that's 0 0.8704 all right now i just want to explain i would normally just stop there and, and i mean that would be my answer for part e and i would carry on and that's perfectly fine those are the correct answers and I wouldn't bother about anything else. But I just want to show you something, just to explain um, something so we can get a deeper understanding of, of this problem. And basically, the answer here 
that h equals 1 is basically a combination of of these outcomes I mean so like if for example the probability that h equals 1 is a combination also of getting ahead on the first throw plus getting ahead on the second throw plus getting ahead on the third throw okay now remember these three this was getting ahead and this is getting two tails and then ahead this is getting three tails and then ahead this was actually getting four tails and also getting three tails and ahead so the only part that we want of this is getting three tails and then ahead so that's 0 0.6 cubed times 0 0.4 Okay, so that's 0 0.6 cubed times 0 0.4. Okay, so 0 0.6 cubed times 0 0.4 and plus 0 0.144 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.4 and that should give us exactly the same answer that we got there. And it does. See, so... Of course, I wouldn't go about doing this in the exam. I'll just do that. But just to show you that you know we're getting the right, we're on the right tracks, and also to to give you a proper understanding of what's happening. Okay, that's the probability of getting one head. It could be either on the first throw or the second throw or the third throw or the fourth throw. Remember, this is not getting the this is not the probability of getting one head. This is the probability of getting four throws. Okay, four throws can be either four tails or three tails and a head. Okay, because you stop after four throws, so it could be four tails that you had. Okay, so that's the answer to part E. I'll just cross this part off because that's just for explanation part purposes, and then I'm going to go into part F now. Okay, now part F, it says write down the value of the probability x equals 3 intersection with h equals 0. That means that the probability that there were three throws and there were no heads. Well, that doesn't make sense because if there were three throws, that means one of them must have, the last one must have been ahead for it to stop at three throws. So the probability for part one must be zero. That's impossible, isn't it? Okay, so for one it's zero. Probability that there were three throws and one of them, and there were no heads, well one of them has to be ahead, doesn't it? Okay, for, for there to be three throws. But the probability that there were four throws and no heads, well that's possible. That's if there were four tails, because the, you can get four tails, you get a tail and then a tail and then a tail and then a tail. Okay, that's four tails and no heads. And the probability of that is 0 0.6 to the power of 4. 0 0.6 to the power of 4 gives you what? 0 0.6 to the power of 4 gives you 0 0.1296. 0 0.1296. That's the answer to that question there. Okay, that's pretty simple. And then it says the random variable s equals x plus h. Okay, now I think I might need this over down here. Let me just bring it down and hold on a second. Okay, now for part G. Okay, it says a random variable S is equal to X plus H. Okay, find the probability distribution of X, of S, sorry. Okay, so S is equal to X plus H. S is equal to X plus H. Now, in order for us to solve this problem, we've got to think about the different possibilities of x and h. Now remember, x is the number of throws, the total number of throws, okay, and h is the number of heads in those throws. Okay, now, so let's think of all the possible values that s can take. Now, can s equals 1? If s equals 1, that means you had x equals 1 and h equals 0. Okay, that means x equals 1 and h equals 0. Of course, x can't equal 0. So the only possibility of getting s equals 1, if you add 1 plus 0, gives you 1. Well, that's not possible because you can't have one throw and no heads. If there's one throw, there has to be one head. Okay, so that gives us the possibility that s equals 2. It can equal 2, and that's when x equals 1 and h equals uh, 1. One head and one throw. Okay, so let's write this S and the probability that S equals S. Okay, so we're going to have here S equals 2 is, a, is the smallest it can be, 2. And that's when you get X equals 1, which is 0 0.4. That's the only way you're going to get S equals 2. 
okay because it's only going to be when you have one throw and one hit okay and that's this what this represents uh, how about s equals three well s equals three it can equal three and that's when you have two throws and one hit okay for this one you can't have uh, x equals two and h equals zero because you can't have two throws and no hits and here you can't have x equals three and h equals zero because you can have uh, you know only two you can have basically uh, three throw if you have three throws with no heads it doesn't work because you have to keep going until you get a head right all right so x equals two h equals one is the only way of getting s equals three that's altogether two throws and one head two throws and one head s equals three is the sum of x plus h so x equals two h equals one is going to be this 0 0.24 so s equals three the probability is 0 0.24 okay then when s equals four now how can we get s equals four we're going to get s equals four if you had three throws all together and one of them is a head okay and you can also get that when x equals four there's four throws and none of them is a head so we have to combine these two separate possibilities for s equals four so there's three total throw three throws but one of them is a head well that's the same as 0 0.144 so that's 0 0.144 let me make some space here and I have to add to that the probability of getting four throws with no heads, which is the same as getting four tails, which we already worked out over here. It was 0 0.1296, wasn't it? That's four tails, which is probably for getting no heads, as we worked out there. 0 0.1296. Okay, so 0 0.1296. So I add them together. I'm going to get the probability of S equals 4. So if I get my answer for that plus... 0 0.144 that gives me my answer of 0 0.2736 0 0.2736 0 0.2736 and then we got the probability that s equals 5 now can s equals 5 can s equals 5 if we think about it yes it can that's when we have a total of four throws when we have four throws all together and one of them is a head Okay, that's the only way of getting s equals 5, because the total number of throws can only be 4. You can't have 4 and 0, that would be 4, that would be this one. So that's the only way of getting, the only way of getting 4 throws, and one of them being a head. That's where you're going to get s equals 5. So that's like doing 3, 4 throws all together, one of them ahead is 3 tails, which is 0 0.6 to the power of 3, and then one head, which is 0 0.4. That's like a tail, then a tail, then a tail, then a head. That's going to have that's going to be four four throws all together. X equals four, and of course, it's only the last one that can be ahead, times zero point four. So you're going to get zero point six cubed times zero point four, zero point six cubed times zero point four. I think that's one of the answers we have up here. I think it's it's going to be part of this. Mm, maybe let's see zero point six cubed times zero point four. No, it's part of this last answer, not the whole of this last answer. It's part of it. Okay, which is 0 0.0864. 0 0.0864. 0 0.0864, which goes over here. And there we have answered this question. Okay, and there we have the answer. Okay, I hope that was clear.